Hi, this is Edwin, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through building a portable Hyper-V lab. Now, I've been using Hyper-V for years now. In fact, I loaded up Windows Server 2008 on my laptop so that I could, you know, add a Hyper-V role on top of it. That's primarily because I do a lot of presentations and test a lot of configuration. Right now, I'm using the Gigabyte Bricks Pro Kit. It's a mini bare bone PC. And since I already have my SSD and my 16 gigabyte memory modules, I figured, well, might as well make the most out of it. It's a, it's a core i5 model that I'm using. After putting in all the parts, you know, I took a screenshot of the cross section, but Let's move past the hardware side of things. Let's go to Windows Server 2012 and start configuring it. So I'm going to connect via remote desktop to my machine. It's a it's a vanilla install. I've installed Windows Server 2012 R2 on this machine. That's all I have at the moment. Now, just to show you a couple of things that I did after installing Windows Server 2012. I'm just going to open up the server properties. Now, you'll probably notice that I didn't even bother renaming the machine, but that's totally up to you. You can name it to something meaningful so that you could easy identify it on your network. After installing Windows Server 2012 R2, the first thing that I did was to enable remote desktop. That's just because I want to keep this as a Hyper-V machine and just connect to it remotely, do most of my stuff via remote desktop. I'm also going to show you my network settings. I currently only have one physical network adapter on this machine. I also disabled Windows Firewall, not something I would recommend, but since this is a portable lab and I don't have access to the internet on this machine, I just basically turned it off. All right. So that's the only thing I did. Now I'm going to use the Add Roles and Features option for adding the Hyper-V role. Under Server Manager, you just click on this link and it launches the the wizards that you can add roles and features on this machine. I'm just going to click on next. Selecting the installation type is just role based or feature based. Again, it's just uh, telling me the destination server. I'm going to select the Hyper V role. Now, when you click on this box, it's going to prompt you to install all the other things that come with it, and that includes the management console, the Hyper-V GUI management console, and all the PowerShell modules that come with it. So just click on Add Features. I'm just going to click on Next after this. Now, I basically added an additional role or feature for this, and it's the fail over clustering feature. Now, similar to the hyper viral, when you click on this, it's going to prompt you for the other options that come with this feature. Now, keep in mind, this is not a clustered setup. It's a standalone machine, and I don't intend to make this a clustered installation. I'm going to explain in a future video why I'm doing that. Click on the add uh, I want to create virtual switches. Notice that it prompts me for the existing network adapter that I have, so I'm just going to select that. I'll click on Next. Now, like I said, I'm not going to be clustering this setup, and I'm not going to be using live migration, so I'm just going to ignore that and click Next. Once that's done, I'm just going to select Restart the destination server, which means after all the installation is done, it's going to automatically restart the machine. And again, I am simply installing the Hyper-V role and a failover clustering feature. Again, keep in mind, I'm not going to cluster this machine, but I just need some of the features for uh, from failover clustering for the things that I'm going to do with this. So I'm just going to speed it up. Now that the installation is done, 
I can just click on this you know, after everything is done, machine rebooted. Notice that you now have the Hyper-V option under Server Manager, which gives you the option to manage multiple Hyper-V servers using this console. At the moment, I only have one. It can launch the Hyper-V management console by using the tools, Hyper-V manager link under Server Manager. Now, being a command line person myself, I rarely use this. I only use this for demonstration purposes. Most of the time, I simply run a, a command, which uh, uh, automatically gets me there. Oops. So under the run command, I type in vertmgmt.msc. Again, the command is vertmgmt.msc. This is the shortcut to launch the Hyper-V Manager. It's, also, it's, it's a uh, Microsoft Management Console. Now, the first thing that I do is configure the Virtual Switch Manager after installing Hyper-V. That's the first thing that I do. And notice, under Virtual Switches, you'll see the Realtek PCI, which is the physical network adapter available on my box. Let me just quickly rename this to something meaningful. Let's see. Hyper-V LAN, maybe. And the reason I'm renaming this is because this will add a network adapter on your Hyper-V host. Just makes it easy for me to identify. Again, this is configured for external networks and it's using my physical network adapter, which means my virtual machines can communicate to my external network using this virtual network switch. Just click on apply there. I'm also gonna add a new virtual network switch, but this is specifically an internal network switch. Let's click on create the virtual switch. Notice that it's it's like an internal network. I'm just re, I'll just rename this to again something more meaningful. And the purpose of this virtual network switch is that so all of my virtual machines can communicate with one another, and that my Hyper-V host can also communicate with my VMs. Again, internal network is what's selected based on my initial selection, and I'll click on apply. I always have at least two virtual network switches configured for my Hyper-V host. And just to show you um, what that did to my network adapters, I'm just gonna click on the adapter settings. Notice that I now have three compared to just one when we started. Ethernet, which is my Realtek PCI GBE family controller, which is my physical network adapter. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna rename that to, let's say, um, something like physical LAN to represent my physical network adapter. Notice those two network adapters, which were basically the Hyper-V virtual switch that I configured earlier. Again, just to make sure that I'm renaming them properly to correspond to the names of the virtual switches on my Hyper-V manager. Rename that. And just to show you how the whole networking thing works, I'm just gonna open up a command prompt. I'm typing ipconfig. Now, if you look at my two network adapters, Hyper-V internal does not have an assigned IP address, whereas my Hyper-V LAN, which is the virtual network switch that corresponds to my physical network adapter has an IP address that matches my external network. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna assign a static IP address for my Hyper-V internal network adapter on my Hyper-V host. Assign an IPv4 IP address. I'll probably use the 172 network subnet. 172.16. And then just use the default subnet. And click on OK. So basically, my Hyper-V host will have that IP address and just 
validate that specific IP address that I created. Now my Hyper-V internal network adapter on my Hyper-V host has that IP address, which means every virtual machine that I configured with that IP address can communicate with my Hyper-V host. That's just it for my Hyper-V networking. So that's how I configure my Hyper-V lab with all the network configuration that come with it. Hope to see you in the next video.